All right. So this is the first lesson of a series of lessons. If you never have done or worked with the Felden, 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 Feldenkrais method of somatic education yet, then I recommend you to work this through the series I'm going to present. And now is the first lesson. As I'm now recording this video, I'm not really sure how to call it. I will probably call it easier lifting of the head. Easier lifting the head, better head organization, lifting better, lifting. You see, for the YouTube titles, I need to have a catchy title so people can find the video and then start to explore this kind of work, this kind of way of exploration, working with the body, experiencing ourselves in ourselves, from inside out. As you know, you are the only person who can perceive yourself from inside out, whereas all the other people in this world un unyieldly in this world, everyone is looking f at you from the outside. Can't be any other way. Now, to have a catchy title, we usually focus on a problem and a solution. Problem, solution, problem, solution. That sells very well, doesn't it? But at this kind of work, we're not... Maybe you have a problem like a back or a knee or a shoulder problem. You're looking for a solution or you... But with this title, <laughs> who is looking to lift the head easier? Nobody's looking to be able to lift the head easier, I guess. Maybe I should call it like easy carriage of the head. So I guess people don't even know what this is about, what you can do with the head at all. So maybe we try this lesson together or you try this lesson and then you will see after, after like 20, 30 minutes, you, your perception for how you carry your head, how you lift your head will have completely changed, enhanced. You are becoming a lot more aware of how you do it, but you also get a lot better organization of how you do it. You organize yourself better for lifting the head. And it will feel much more pleasurable, I hope so. So usually in class I would talk you through it when you are in a live class, so I can observe your movements and I can react to your movements and adjust what I'm saying. But on YouTube, of course, I only see this, I cannot really see you. So I will do the movements myself, I participate in, 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 in this exploration. I mean, I could just sit here and talk you through it, but I want to participate too. I need, I need this lesson too. I'm in Austria, close to the Switzerland border. It's a very beautiful little town, but it's getting winter, it's dark, it's a very lonely place, and I need this lesson. So I'm going to participate. I'm going on the floor. I will talk you through the lesson, and I hope you participate too, and we can explore together of how to make it easier to lift the head. So you will need a carpet, not a mattress, a mattress will be too soft, a sofa will be too soft, just like a carpet or maybe a very flat futon. This is a futon, cotton mattress, this is too soft. You won't feel much on this. All right, so let's come to the floor and start with this Feldenkrais lesson.
So when you come to the floor, one way to describe this method, I, I just reread, I saw this quote, to make peace with gravity, not just in lying down, but also in standing, to be at peace with gravity. <laughs> to be at peace with gravity. Is it possible for you to lie down? I have clients who can't really lie down like this. For them, it's painful to lie down. So if it's easy for you to lie down, you can be grateful. I am grateful. You know, when I was 17, I was doing skateboarding and snowboarding and doing sports. And I thought re being really flexible is super important and being able to do all sorts of tricks and stunts and going into all sorts of risks. And the older I got, the more I started to value when I just have uh, an agreeable, a nice content feeling in the body. I just, I don't feel any pain when, I, when I'm able to just walk down the street without pain. That's some, some sort of achievement of, of a feeling of being happy with myself that I was able to maintain myself to a degree where I'm um, pain-free, where I'm able to walk pain-free and to go wherever I want to go. And if I want to travel places, I can do it. My, my body will allow it, will support it. And this takes a lot of work. I think many people don't realize how much work it takes to maintain the body. We, we take it for granted. And we think we can work eight hours or 10 hours in a factory or in an office. And then we can play computer or watch TV in the evening and have a meal and just live our lives, you know. And we don't need to maintain the body, but we have to. We have to be very careful what we eat and how we move. So, if we're able to lie down on the floor without pain, that's, that's quite, it's quite something. It's nothing you can show off. When you're 70, you can show off. I can't show it off. But when you're like 30 or 20, it's not, nothing you can show off. It's just, I'm just telling you, if you are able to do this, that's quite an achievement. I have clients in the mid-twenties with very strong pains. So anyways, this is as an introduction. <laughs> Lying down, you are not concerned with gravity anymore. If, you, if your head is hanging backwards when you lie down, then please take a cushion and put the cushion under the back of your head so that your head is not hanging backwards anymore. I don't need a cushion because my head is not hanging backwards. It has something to do with the chest. My chest used to be a lot stiffer than it is now. I was able to make my chest flexible again. I guess it was flexible when I was a baby. And it was very, very hard, very stiff for decades. 20 years, I guess. And I worked a lot without stretching, just by movement organization, this kind of exploration we are going to do now. And it started to become softer again. So when I lay down on the floor, my chest, my spine is flexible enough so that I can lie fairly straight on the floor without my head hanging backwards. But that's an achievement. That's something I worked on. That was nothing. That, that, that's not granted. I don't take it for granted. It was a, quite a bit of work. So please bring your feet to standing so that your feet are standing and that your knees are pointing towards the ceiling. That's our starting position for, for the first movement we are going to do. In the Feldenkrais method, we have many lessons. And some of the lessons concern themselves of how to get the feet to standing. This very simple movement of 
how you bring your feet to standing is a, a lesson in itself uh, or a couple of lessons. We can work five hours or more on how to bring the feet to standing, but that's not the point of this first lesson. Then we have the second question, how are they standing? Where are the feet standing? This could be a whole theme, a whole theme of lessons also. Where do you put your feet to standing so that the knees don't drop to the side? How can you even feel how much tension you have in your hips, in the muscles around the hips, in your legs or in, in your back in that regard? If you put your feet to standing like this, like the feet very close to each other and the knees very close to each other. I can tell you there's a lot of work in your legs to be able to maintain that position. Also if your feet are very far away from your buttocks, there is work and we're looking for a fair, fairly relaxed way of standing the feet. Maybe focus on your right foot, the sole of your right foot. And how do you perceive that? Is that like a blob, a large area, or is it a very differentiated, very refined area where you get many signals? So your foot is not just one piece, one chunk of foot, but you have toes and balls of the, of the toes, the feet, and you have a heel. And it's not just a heel, but you have like an inside and an outside edge of the heel, a middle part, a behind part, of closer to the midfoot part. Where do you feel is the weight? Because there is weight on your foot right now, if your foot is standing. Weight from the knee, from the lower leg, maybe a little bit weight from the upper leg. And you have arches in your feet, foot, feet, which support the pressure which will support your foot in standing with this little weight or you can put your whole body on top of the feet and they will carry you, I hope, without pain if they're well maintained. And then you can feel your pelvis, please. Where are you lying? Do you feel a left buttock or a right buttock? Or are you lying more on your sacrum? which is the bone between the two buttocks. It is the lower end of the spine, sacrum. That's the name of it. Depends on your size, right? If you're very slim, you will probably feel your sacrum better. And then your lower back and your shoulder blades, how you're lying on your shoulder blades or on your spine. Just feel where do where can we feel something or do we feel like a cotton, cotton ball, cotton puff? Like a mattress like this, undifferentiated, big ball of cotton. And then your neck is not resting on the floor, I hope. There's a little lordosis behind your neck and then there's the back of your head and you're resting somewhere on the back of your head and then please lift your head a, a little bit just lift your head just a tiny bit to see how you lift the head there's so many ways to lift the head how do you lift it and how much effort is it and don't, don't jerk it up and don't think of it as a gym exercise or like a exercise at all but just lift your head to see how what are the components, the ingredients of this movement of lifting your head? What do you do when you lift your head without your hands? Have your hands on the floor and just lift the head a couple of times to get aware of how you lift your head. So since mindfulness is a big business and there's millions and millions of dollars made and to be made with mindfulness, these people, they distinguish between mindfulness and awareness and they have a lot of words for it. And beautiful presentations, of course, because when you sell something, you have to make it uh, worth while for people. 
You could call it a mindfulness movement. We call it awareness, to be aware of what is happening when you move. What part of yourself do you engage when you lift your head? And we will learn more about this during the lesson. Now in Feldenkrais we have movements, so this would be a first movement to lift your head and bring it down again. And we have movements, many movements, which build upon each other and we sequence these movements. So the next movement, please interlace your fingers, interlace your hands, so you put the hands together, interlaced, and bring the hands interlaced, interlaced. It's like shoelaces, right? They call it when you, when you, when you have strings with the little ropes on your shoes and you lace your shoes. So you lace your hands without making a knot and you bring it to the back of your head. And you rest your hands in your hands and preferably you look towards the ceiling or the sky. And you just feel how your head is resting. You feel the weight of your head, 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 toe. Your head in your hands. And then just lift your head with your hands, with the help of your arms. Lift your head as if your head would be a passenger. A melon, a watermelon, very precious watermelon beautiful watermelon. You lift your head with your hands, with your arms, and try this. How is it when you don't use your neck muscles so much or not at all and you let your head be lifted by your arms? And bring it down again. Take a short rest. Now let your elbows point towards the side. So that's the third movement. Elbows towards the side. So this is an instruction to have the elbows pointing towards the side and you lift your head with your elbows pointing towards the side. And try this a couple of times just so you get a feel of how you do that. That's a movement you obviously understand because I can tell you what to do and you can do it. Some, so you explored this movement as a baby and you used it a couple of times in your life, you, you know what it is. You know what it is to lift your head with your arms and the elbows pointing towards the sides, but just feel how it is like. And then we do this next, you can do this like five times or 20 times, just depends on uh, how long you want to observe, experiment. So it's really not much. You see, this is not a workout. This is, this is a me time or you time. You take this time, YouTube, you time. <laughs> you take this time for yourself just to feel comfortable. And you can trust the sequence of these movements will feel, make you feel more and more comfortable. But continue to the next instruction, which you will please raise up your elbows a little bit, like halfway towards the ceiling. We would say like 45 degrees, something like this. Just raise your elbows a little bit and then continue to lift your head and bring it down and see how much of a difference that makes compared to having your elbows to your sides, pointing your elbows to the sides. So it's 45 degrees or the elbows to the sides. You should be able to feel a difference in your shoulders, in your neck, in the middle part of your body. Let's make another movement, which will is the same movement, lifting your head with the help of your arms, but let your elbows point toward the ceiling. And do whatever is necessary. Whatever you feel matches. Don't, 
don't feel that you really, really, really have to follow what I say. Just try. So the instruction is you're lying supine, facing the sky, feet are standing, hands interlaced behind your head, and you're trying this movement, and everything else is allowed. Whatever you think of, the, you, you can do whatever. Whatever you think, you're clever. And you, like, for example, bring the chin further towards the chest bone. So these are three ways to point your elbows, to the sides, 45 degrees, or to the ceiling. Then please take a rest. You can stretch out your legs or have them standing. Just feel how you're lying on the floor now. Because this is something that changes throughout this lesson, how you feel how you're lying on the floor. Maybe the back of your chest starts not to be a cotton ball anymore, if it was at the beginning, I don't know. But you start to be more aware of the different areas on your back. Or your buttocks or your legs. You start to feel more. You're getting more aware of your presence, of what there is to feel. But also being more aware of the movement and the connection between what you think what we do, what you sense, what you feel. So please bring your feet to standing again. Your feet are standing. Interlace your fingers. Bring them behind the back of your head. Not in your neck, but the back of your head. Let your elbows point towards the ceiling. This should be the easiest. And lift your head again. I needed this lesson so much. It feels really nice. And then let's explore breathing. Breathe, bring your attention to your breathing. Don't change your breathing. Just bring your attention. Just be aware of that when you breathe, that, you, that you're breathing. I'm sure you're breathing. And the next time you breathe out, just catch this out breath. You're observing your breathing and you catch the out breath. You see, ah, there is an out breath. And with the out breath, lift the head and then lower it again. And see how that feels like to lift the head together with the out breath. Yeah? And now try the in breath. Whenever you catch yourself breathing in, lift the head and see what a difference that makes. Try the same thing with holding your breath. You can breathe in, hold the breath without pinching your nose, lift the head. So I would say breathing out should be the easiest. It's like a balloon. When there's just little air in a balloon, you can twist the balloon. Well, if the balloon is full of air, it's difficult to twist it, right? Balloon, balloon, balloon. You can explore this a little bit. So this is not a belly muscle workout. We're working on the organization of how to lift the head. And for that, we already had like five or six different movements. Each of them makes us more aware of what is happening, what is going on. So take a little break, a little rest. I start to feel my shoulder blades a lot better again. Outside is outside it's dark and there's no people in the streets and the shops are closed. All right, then please bring your feet to standing. 
interlace your hands, bring them underneath your head, behind your head, behind the back of your head. And with the elbows pointing towards the ceiling, lift your head again. And see how that feels like after this short break. Now, when you think of it, you're going up on kind of a midline, like a midline path. When you have your hand behind, interlaced behind your head, you bring it, it's kind of a midline, like where I have this, my jacket has this zipper, or where you have your belly button, the midline. But try, try a, now try a different path, a different way. Bring your right elbow more towards your left knee rather than your right knee. Towards, please don't, don't even think of touching. This is, not, it's, this is a different lesson. Just lift your head a tiny little bit so you don't come up straight, but with a slight rotation to the left. And come back down again, rest your head, and then start a fresh movement. So we always start a fresh movement. We have a new opportunity, opportunity to observe something. All right, the next time you rest your head, bring your elbows towards the ceiling and lift your left elbow a little bit closer towards your right knee, towards. So this is a different path of coming up. So it's not only straight, we can have a slight rotation to the right or a slight rotation to the left and everything in between. And bring down your head, take a short rest. So, uh, that's one thing I need to tell you about the interlacing of the hands. In Feldenkrais, we have a habitual way, we, we say we have a habitual way of interlacing the hands, which is the way you would normally fold your hands, right? You would fold your hands in a habitual way. Try to fold your hands a couple of times, interlace your hands a couple of times. But there's also the non-habitual way, if it feels non-habitual, it depends on your habits, right? So for me, the habitual way would, would be to have the left thumb on top of the right thumb and the left index finger on top of the right index finger. But you can also interlace it the other way around with the right hand. Thing. It depends on what, do you know, you guess, you, you understand what I mean. <laughs> All right, so there you have the, take the non-habitual, maybe one way to interlace your fingers feels weird, right? For me, it's, the, it's a little bit of a difference. It's like two centimeters, one inch of a difference for the arms, for the organization of the neck. Small difference, but there is a difference. So take the unusual way of folding, interlacing your hands, bring them behind your head, which will feel even more unusual. Don't be repelled by it. Don't think it's strange. It's just unusual. So your unusual, non-habitual way of interlaced your hands behind your, the back of your head, bring the elbows towards the ceiling and try to lift your head again. <laughs> this might give you a new opportunity to feel this movement. And try a little bit diagonal. Left elbow to, towards the right knee or right elbow towards the left knee. You can play a little bit with this interlaced fingers thing. Or maybe we can interlace it, only half interlace it, or quarter interlace the hands. 
This will always give a new feeling of lifting the head. And let your head really be lifted. Okay, we need to continue with the lesson. Take a rest. Eey. My spine becomes much more flexible. I can differentiate. I can feel the different vertebrae now. How is it for you? Can, can you? It's quite sensational. I can feel the different vertebrae of the upper part of my chest how they are resting on the floor, and I can differentiate the ribs. <sighs> I didn't do a lesson for like four days, and already my, I lost so much awareness, but I regain it back very fast. Such an interesting thing, being alive, having a body. Having a, is it having a body? Being the body, resolving the question of who am I? It's this, or who, who are you? It's that what you are, it's there, and there's your fingers, and you can interlace your fingers, and that's your interlaced fingers and your interlaced hands, that's what you are. Please bring your feet to standing, bring the interlaced hands behind your head, the back of your head, and be aware that your hands are resting on the floor or the pillow. You can feel that, right? Your hands are squeezed in between your head and the floor. Bring your elbows towards the ceiling and then slowly, very slowly, start to lift your head and feel how the distance between your fingers and the floor is getting bigger. So once your fingers are in the air, it's not so easy to feel how far is it. So you have to come back and lift the head again a little bit and come back again so you feel the distance, you get a feeling for the distance between the hands which are lifting your head and the floor. And at some point your neck is lifting more and at some point like C6, C7, T1, T2 the vertebras in the spine start to lift a little bit. Maybe your shoulders come up a little bit and feel how you peel yourself away from the floor and feel how you bring your head back to the floor. Start to become aware of the space between your head and the neck and the floor. So we're looking at the negative space now or space itself. We're not looking at our at my, at your body anymore, yourself, but at the space. And feel how you peel away or you, you roll up. This lesson has been going on far too long. Please come to rest on the floor again. Take a short rest. We need to, we need to wrap it up, finish it. So you're lying supine, you just feel how you're lying, how aware you are of how you lie. It's a good feeling, should be a good feeling. And come back to our reference movement, the initial movement. Just lift your head a little bit. And maybe it's easier. But for sure you're more aware of what you're doing. Right? When you lift your head now, for sure it's different than in the beginning. When I have a class of 10 people, in everyone it looks different. I can see it. And most everyone can feel it. I will have one or two more lessons on this business of lifting the head. I won't record today, but I'll maybe record tomorrow, so maybe we can make this into a two, two weeks daily lessons thing or 30 days daily lessons thing. I don't know where this is leading to. For sure it will take me more time to record it because I can't record every day. But in the end I want to have like really a couple of lessons. Oh yeah, please come up to sit. Roll over a side and come up to sit. And feel how you carry your head now, how your head is 
suspended in the air, floating on top of your spine. And for this matter, please come up to standing so we can explore this, this feeling in standing. How your head is on top, yeah? on top of your shoulders, on top of your pelvis, how your pelvis is on top of your feet and now you can feel your feet again. Maybe you can differentiate where, you, where is the weight on your feet, right leg, more than on the left leg or the other way around, or evenly distributed, more on the toes or more on the back. Start to be easy, upright. Don't put too much tension. Take a few steps, just feel, feel how it is to walk. Bend your head and to lift your head. <laughs> marvelous, marvelous. Right? <clears throat> All right. Uh, there's a little like button below the video. If you like the video, please like the video. That's very important for my YouTube channel so that other people can find it. If, if there's a like, YouTube will rank it better. If you want to share, I would be happy to read your experience in this lesson. So I can also see how to progress. Maybe you, I can get some ideas from me. That's our way we can directly interact through the comments. And yeah. Thank you for participating and have a good day and see you in the next video.